finally done having to piss into a big old jar. Now I can finally get back to relaxing and making videos, even after having seven vials of blood taken from me for my blood draw today. Yeah, that was that was an adventure. Let's dive on into, well, Duelist Nexus is looking like a big piece of chicken nuggies, ladies and gentlemen. It's looking broken. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, AvriLR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button, as well as that ding-dong notification taco bell notification bell, so you can be part of the A-gang and we can climb even higher the 1200 ladder. I really do appreciate all of the support, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I wanted to talk about uh, Duelist Nexus, because... Really, like I've said before, we're in the off season. We've got nationals. Cashier is going to probably be winning nationals and all that fun stuff. So there's really not much going on in the game other than we know of like product coming out, the 25th anniversary collection and things like that. So I've been deciding to lab. Granted, it's been a little bit early, but labbing the new Synchron Stardust Synchro stuff. And ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> just on a generic standpoint. There's not gonna be like any sort of images on the video. This is gonna be more of a discussion video. But just on a generic face value level, Revolution Synchron and Wheel Synchron, we already knew Assault Synchron was good, but Assault Synchron by extension, these three Synchrons are so damn good, just in the broad scheme of the game. Like, it's, it is insane. Like the fact that Wheel Synchron, it's a level five, but like if you're playing Junk Speeder, you don't care. Or like if you Foolish Burial it to the graveyard and like Monster Reborn it back or something like that. The fact that it's a tuner and then can also be treated as a non-tuner is so disgusting because it's so multi-purpose. Like I was looking at the 13th place um, Synchron Synchro deck that topped uh, a region, I believe it was in like Utah or Illinois, something like that. And the dude was playing like one copy of Fire Ant, uh, a Saster, three of the Fire Ant Dawn Walker thing. And I'm just like, bro, you literally throw in three copies of the Wheel Synchron. You put in one Revolution Synchron, take out the Fire Ant, a Caster, and you still have the same deck. And it still operates pretty well, if not better than what it did before. Now, are straight Synchron decks going to have to make changes? Oh, yeah, they'll definitely have to make changes because... If you're playing like a Synchron deck where like you kind of climb up the lower level Synchros into like Barons and stuff like that, it's not going to work as well. And I've learned that just from a couple hours of just testing hands. Um, and yes, we're going to talk about Junk Speeder in a minute because that's really the pin that kind of holds this whole chicken nuggy sandwich together. Um, you play like the higher level stuff now. So like you play like Shooting Quasar, the new Cosmic Blazar, uh, just unload your 4,000 attack monster blazar sh Like, <laughs> it's it's absolutely insane. Uh, the deck can play red supernova dragon, which is another 4,000 attack and defense. Like, not a negator, but like if the opponent activates a monster effect or declares an attack, you can banish all their cards and just banish the supernova. Like, the potential that this deck has is insane. And that's not even mentioning the new crimson dragon support. Like, at first I was kind of on the fence with the scrap iron idol. Um, and I think Synchro Zone also got revealed in the Duelist Nexus stuff. But I was really on the fence about Scrap Iron Idol because I'm like, okay, you can revive something back. It'll go back to the extra deck, but you can reset it. So it's like a return. Scrap Iron Idol is actually pretty good. Like, I don't know if it's a three of right now. I found a build uh, on YGO Organization that was using a Trickstar package with the new Synchron stuff. And it was playing three Synchro Zone and three uh, Scrap Iron Idol. And the deck seems really cool. It, it seems really disgusting when it pops off. I don't know if playing multiple idols is really going to be the way to go. It seems more like a one of, kind of like a purely leap is usually at least a one of and purely. And then being able to summon out the Crimson Dragon. And yes, it's only as good as the other synchros you have on the board. But the fact that it just gets better as you make bigger synchros. Like once you get out a shooting Quasar or a Cosmic Blazar, then you can use the Crimson Dragon to tag into any of the other Quasars, whether it's uh, shooting Quasar or uh, not Cosmic Blazar, but uh, I think Cosmic Quasar Dragon. Like you can go into multiples of these and like just tag them out to get out other ones. And like, it's absolutely disgusting. Now with all that being said, is... 
Duelist Nexus the next Power of the Elements. No. F*** no. It is no. Just, it, it's nowhere near that. <laughs> so, on a scale from 1 to 10, if Power of the Elements is at like a 10, right? We are probably looking at Duelist Nexus being like a 7 out of 10. Only because of the fact, like, there's no Triple Tactics-esque cards in here. We're getting very generically good synchros, uh, or excuse me, tuners. We're getting kind of decent generically good synchros. Like, Crimson Dragon is technically generic. I think that we're going to see a lot of that stuff kind of be played more in Dragon Link and stuff like that. And, like, it'll just be even more Wombo Combo. Um, but I do still think that Duelist Nexus is going to be a good set. And then once we get Age of Overlord, I think Age of Overlord is going to be the set that makes us for the year. Like, I think that's going to be our just banger of a year set, um, just based on how everything looks right now. Now, with all this being said, is Pure Synchron going to be a tier one deck? <sighs> I think it's going to be tier two. And I don't really know if that's a hot take, right? Because the issue with me hold, holding it back from potentially being a tier one deck, keeping up with the purelys and the cash tiers of the world, barring whatever our next ban list will be, is Junk Speeder. Now, <sighs> Jesus Christ, Junk Speeder just holds the deck together like glue. And if that shit gets negated, your ass is up the creek without a paddle. Because it's like, if you have no other lines except to just go junk speeder and hope for the best, like that gets negated, you are just screwed. You might as well pick up your cards and go to the next round. Like I've had a couple hands now testing this build I saw on YGO organization, just as like a starting point, kind of more experimental. We're like, I can get to junk speeder and I can establish five tuners, but if that gets negated, I have no other plays and I have to pass turn. And I know that my opponent is going to be licking their lips and be like, mm, you got a scoop, bitch boy. <laughs> and I'm just like, no. If it doesn't get Nibiru, like, it, even, even not Nibiru, like, if it just doesn't get negated, you're good. Because now, the last thing I want to mention about this, what's cool about the deck now, like, just pure synchrons in general, you go Junk Speeder, usually by, like, summon number three, because at least in my case, playing the Trickstar engine, you can, like, summon Candina, search Light Stage, play Light Stage, get Lycoris, bounce the Candina, summon Lycoris, special summon Assault Synchron if you open with it, make the Junk Speeder, that's on summon number, well, in this case, four, since you use the Candina to search, unless you just open the Lycoris, then it's three, you summon out your five tuners, even if the opponent nibs you, you're going for the start of Synchron. So you search the Illumination, the opponent nibs you, Chinook 2, fine, what the f*** ever. Uh, you can go Illumination to dump the trail to the grave. Use the Synchron to tribute the token, get out Synchron, uh, trail gets summoned out, and then you can still make it uh, Excel, Synchro, Stardust, and then do other lines. So like you can play through Nib now, which is fantastic. I just don't know if it's going to be enough to keep up with the meta, because... The thing is that in Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2023, if you're not playing a meta deck, whether it's the your boy being the self-appointed Purely King, I know I say it like every video now, but it's just a joke. If you're not playing Sprite Purely, if you're not playing Cash Tira, if you're not playing these meta contending decks, and you're playing something rogue, like rank 8 Axis, Synchron, what the f*** ever, if you get hand-trapped even with like just an Ash, you're probably losing. Most decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! in today's day and age can't play through two hand traps. Like, I'm seriously, I know that that's kind of crazy to say, but like, tier element, when it was tier zero, it could basically play through like, I would argue like three or four hand traps, depending on how it opened, because like, it just had all of the gas. But now, like, you know, if you go against, say, rank eight Axis, you know, they activate trade in, they ditch their level eight, their Gizmek, you ash them, and then like, if you follow it up with like a shifter or an imperm, like, they lose. Like, some decks like Sprite can play through two hand traps if they open up decently. When I was playing Sprite purely, I could play through an Ash and an Imperm. If you hit me with like a Shifter or something, I'm probably losing that game because that's just way too much to overcome at that point. And again, that's a lot of decks in the game right now. You know, you hit the opponent with like an Ash and they just play through it and they do their five summons. You hit them with a Nib, a well-timed Nib, they're going to lose that game. And so it's going to be interesting to see the route that Konami goes with balancing, okay, we're going to have this new Synchron, Synchro stuff in the meta, plus Punk will probably run some of that stuff to an extent, because as we saw with Based, aka for all you new to the channel, because I think that that name is fucking idiotic, uh, badass, sexy engine deck, uh, playing all of these things, 
it's going to be interesting to see how it is that they decide to balance the meta on a new upcoming ban list. And if we're going to see all of this new Crimson Dragon stuff that just makes you feel like you say Fudo actually be good or if it's just going to be booty booty butt cheeks. Because the stuff is cool. It's really good when it works. Like... We're ending on boards with like Cosmic Blazar, Shooting Quasar, a Scrap Iron Idol to get out Stardust Dragon just to have more negates because why not? A Buy Steel Dispater. Like I've had boards in testing where I've ended on like six synchros. One in the extra monster zone, five in the main monster zones. And you're just looking at the opponent like if you don't have a Dark Ruler, you're screwed. Also, you may want to pick up your Dark Ruler no more because that deck does become a thing. It can't stop Dark Ruler. <laughs> So you could just win. You're just auto win with Dark Ruler. That's the other issue too with the Synchron deck is like it doesn't have an Infernity Barrier. So it's like, what are you doing? So it's very, it's going to be very interesting, I should say, to see what happens. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Uh, I apologize for bleeping out all the curse words. I'm trying to see what I can do with YouTube's algorithm and see if this kind of pushes me up a little bit because I, I do like to be real, but I also like to kind of, you know, curse and have a good time and, you know, put on this persona. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.